Hello, I'm Dr. Jonah. In this video, we'll be looking at engine cooling water systems and also I'll be explaining how to regulate engine cooling water system temperature to prevent engine overheating. From the video, we have a 3D animation of a four-cylinder inline internal combustion engine. It has four pistons. You can see one, two, three, and four from the animation, and they are in line. There is also the crankshaft, and the crankshaft is connected to an axial fan. This particular engine is air-cooled. The fan is driven by the crankshaft, and there is also the jacket water pump as shown then we have the thermostat too um we'll be discussing more on the thermostat as we progress further and also we have the radiator which will serve as the heat exchanger and there is also the expansion tank and also relevant hoses and pipings to make up the system So let's delve into the lesson as I give a brief explanation of what happens when we start our engine. So um, let's go back to our, our animation short, shortly. When an engine is started, the engine is cold. You can see the blue arrow shows the cooling water system that it's cold, while um, the red arrows will show the cooling water system is hot or getting hot. So from the animation, the arrows are flowing around the combustion space or you can say around the engine cylinder. You can also, some people call it the um, jacket um, water cooling system. Some people call it, call it the engine um, cooling water system. They are all the same. They can be used um, interchangeably. So um, meanwhile, the jacket helps keeps the engine cylinder at uh, an optimum temperature. So looking forward, we can see the cooling water pump sucking from the jacket of the engine and sends the cooling water to this thermostat. Now, since the engine is cold, the thermostat will send the cooling water down by passing the heat exchanger, or you can call it the radiator, and it recirculates. So now, why do we need recirculation? Recirculation is important in the engine because we are not always trying to cool the engine, but rather we want to maintain, want to regulate the temperature of engine for optimum operation. Therefore, the idea is of recirculation to enable us maintain the engine um, operating at optimum temperature. So let's say this temperature around 80 degrees C, depending on the engine apparently. So that's how the engine is when it is cold. But we can find out that as the engine keep um, starts operating, it will generate heat and it will generate more heat. And at some certain point, the engine needs to be cooled. So now, go, um, if you notice that we we uh, there is a red arrow on your animation at some point this shows that the engine is beginning to be hot and it needs to be cold so looking closely at the thermostat you will see that the notice that the thermostat has changed position the lower piece or the lower pipe is now blocked the thermostat blocked that piece of because of the temperature meanwhile the top part of the thermostat is now open you will see a gap in the top part and it's allowing the flow that's the hot um, engine cooling water through the top part that allows it flows to the radiator to be cooled down meanwhile the fan since the fan is driven by the engine it is always supplying air across the radiator the air there is indicated by that peach colored arrows and as the air is blown across the radiator it cools down the cooling water to a minimum temperature meanwhile not this engine is air cold so the blue arrow down indicates that the hot 
flow now has been cooled down. Okay, if you notice the animation, the thermostat expanded slightly um, due to the increase in the engine temperature. Hence, the flow goes upward. And when we have a cold engine, the flow goes downward. And this operation continues depending on the engine temperature. So, the thermostat is a proportional device which opens and closes a relative amount based on the engine's temperature. So, if the engine is running very, very hot, the thermostat will be fully opened. So, let's say the current position of the thermostat is um, somewhere in between. Note that as the thermostat regulates engine temperature, it will be moving up and down based on the engine's temperature. So, most time it might not be fully opened or fully closed or even fully bypassed but it's sometime it might just be somewhere in between and this is because the engine sometime is not creating the maximum amount of heat maybe the engine is just idling and hence some cooling water may flow to the radiator and some through the bypass apparently that's the function of the thermostat for temperature regulation since we are trying to regulate the thermal temperature of the engine so we can also say it's a feedback loop because the temperature of the engine is controlled by the thermostat and the cooling water tells the thermostat what the engine temperature is and so the thermostat uses this feedback to regulate the engine's temperature again by initiating the flow direction of the cooling water so um let's take a detailed look at the thermostat so considering the thermostat now as an individual component from the animation, you can see a full view of the thermostat, basically how it looks. On the top, we have a rod standing out. Um, the whole section of the top, like the brass-like piece, is called the primary valve. And around the primary valve, there's a black piece, which is made of rubber-like material and is used for sealing. Yeah, um, going for the, the next black piece is also used for sealing. It is being pushed down into a recess within the engine and it sits comfortably, making it easy to change the thermostat. Also, there is an air bleed which is used to remove air from the cooling um, water system. Moving down, we have a spring, another spring, then we have the secondary or the bypass valve section. And also the charge cylinder. So how does this component actually work? When there is an increase in temperature, the top, prim the, the top primary valve opens and the bypass valve closes. Hence, the radiator is, is not bypassed. But if the temperature decreases, then the bypass opens and the primary valve to the radiator closes. So, having established the basic facts of how um, the thermostat um, works, the design is quite a simple one. We will like to see what leads to the opening and closing of the valves, um, the thermostat rather. There is a wax within the charge cylinder of the thermostat and this wax is in a stolic state. So, be, um, and it's below a temperature of about 80 degrees C. When the wax becomes hot, it turns to liquid and this change requires more volumetric space or well, you can say it needs a larger volume to accommodate it and that larger and that large volume pushes the rod the rod out of the charge cylinder and it will actually close the secondary bypass valve the chest um so the process is is basically as follows the charge cylinder is hot the wax melts becomes liquid the volume expands it pushes the rod downward um which closes the bypass valve so the flow um does not uh, uh, enters the the radiator so that's what happens when it is hot at the same time the primary valve is open which allows the cooling water to go into the radiator when the cooling water becomes cold again the rod will retract because the wax in the charge cylinder now has a smaller volume and require less space so 
the rod retracts upward and the bypass opens and cooling water does not enter the radiator hence regulation is carried out so now we are regulating the response of the thermostat in a proportionate manner with the engine cooling water temperature serving as its feedback too so apparently now you can get a picture of how an engine cooling water system works um quickly let's look up the um, thermal expansion and thermal contraction of the engine in relation to cooling so thermal expansion um, is taken care of by the header or expansion tank um, as the cooling water gets hot some of it may expand as a property of of liquid fluid expand so some of them may expand as the cooling water temperature becomes very very hot and some of them as they expand goes through the piping system into the header tank so hence the header tank's function and ultimate goal is to allow thermal expansion of the system so have you considered if there is no header tank what will happen so if there's no header tank when this expansion occurs, there will be leakages down the radiator, which is not very good for the system. So apparently, if we have a very hot engine, we can have a very cold engine, especially um, engines that have been using very cold, the Arctic regions. So in the event of a very cold engine, um, the cooling water is being treated um, to prevent damages. So in this case, precaution has to be taken to protect the engine from freezing. Anti-freeze treatment is added to the cooling water system. This prevents the water from freezing at a very low temperature, let's say minus 5 degrees C. So it is very important to prevent the cooling water from freezing because when freezing occurs, expansion occurs. And when expansion occurs beyond controllable measure, cracking of the engine block will occur and this can also cause potential damages to other engine components the cooling water is also treated with corrosion inhibitors to prevent rust accumulating within the engine cooling water system area areas such as the jacket cylinder liners the pump thermostat etc um apparently this can um those rust formation will lead to fouling of the heat exchanger that's the radiator and reduces the efficiency of the cooling water system um so that's where we will draw the cotton in um cooling engine cooling water system if you like this video do share it on social media instagram facebook twitter linkedin whatever social media give it a like button give it a thumbs up it will be great if you leave a comment too feedback is always very appreciated and encouraging remember to subscribe to sailor space to support us thank you for your time sharing is caring until next time stay healthy and safe